So today I'm going to be talking about the novel House of Doors by Tan Tuan Eng. My third read from the Booker long list. It's Booker season, baby. How long until that gets old? I'll let you decide. House of Doors is a historical fiction novel fictionalising the lives of real life people. The themes in this novel are marriage, memory, loss, sexuality and cultural disruption. Plus a few others that I have definitely missed. We start the novel in 1947 where we meet Leslie Hamlin who is by herself ruminating on her time in Malaysia. We then quickly jump back to the year 1921. Leslie Hamlin and her husband Robert, a war veteran and lawyer, are living in Penang. One day Willie Morn, a famed writer and old friend of Robert's, arrives for an extended stay with his secretary Gerald. Okay, let's nip this in the bud right now. I'm going to be saying the word Willie a lot and you are either going to laugh or not laugh every single time I say it. His actual name is William Somerset Morn. However, throughout this novel, he is called Willie constantly. So that's why I kept saying Willie. Willie. Yeah, you're going to hear Willie a lot. Feel free to laugh or not laugh. It's your call. And the pair's presence creates a rift that could end up altering everyone's lives. The novel jumps between Leslie and Willie's perspectives, but in essence, Leslie is our protagonist. She takes up most of the page space in this novel. Willie is one of the great novelists of his day. Willie is hiding his homosexuality and is unhappy in an expensive marriage of convenience. He spends his time traveling the world trying to escape his wife and all the while looking for new stories. Soon after he arrives in Penang to stay with Leslie and Robert, he finds out that he has lost his savings and all of his fortune, which will limit his ability to travel freely with his secretary, Gerald. Willie is in desperate need of a subject for his new book. In comes Leslie. Leslie is also enduring a marriage that is more on the edge than it might first appear. Willie suspects an affair. And after learning of Leslie's connection to the Chinese revolutionary Dr. Satyan Sen, he decides to probe deeper. The novel then jumps back to 1910 as Leslie starts to tell her story. Her story is full of scandal, the origins of the Chinese revolution and the real life murder trial of Ethel Proudlock. Ethel is on trial for killing a man who was trying to rape her. And I'm going to leave that there as far as plot points are concerned. I think that gives you a good enough idea of kind of what's going on in this novel. Now, let's get this out of the way. The writing style is extremely flowery and very indulgent. And I think you are going to fall into one of two camps with this one. Or you might be like me and find yourself somewhere a little in between. You are either going to find the writing like a big warm blanket that wraps itself over you in its rich and colourful and detailed descriptions, making you feel all cosy. Or you're going to get annoyed at how overwritten this novel is, how hard this novel is trying to make the mundane poetic, how it is trying to make the smallest little moments feel epic. Now I think I'm kind of in the middle, which I know is an absolute cop-out. At times Tang Tuang En's writing style felt unnecessary, like it was just too bloated. And then at other times, I kind of really, really loved it. I really sunk into the flow of it. And then I'd hit a moment and I'd go, oh, that's a bit too overwritten. So yeah, I think I'm somewhere in the middle with it all. But anyway, let's jump right into what did I like and what didn't I like? What I liked? Well, this is what I would call a box ticker novel. It's got a lot going on, both on the page and subtextually. It's very political, but yet it is also deeply personal. The characters are all morally complex and overall really well-rounded. And I really like the examination of colonial Brits in Malaysia. I liked how it touched on the ideas that they had a sense of inferiority in Malaysia. And because of that, they decided to become more British than people actually even were in England. They abided by much more rigid standards, stiff upper lip and all that jazz. And I feel like, yeah, I haven't really read a novel that explores that kind of idea before. Of course, those novels probably absolutely exist. And I hope that you could let me know of any ones that you think do it better than this novel. But yeah, I did enjoy this aspect of it. The pacing was good and I wasn't ever bored bored I never really said to myself throughout it oh god I'm bored uh, I was always sort of yeah just about entertained enough to keep me going structurally the novel builds really well and it jumps from perspective exactly when it needs to in order to keep the tension and the story building and as already mentioned the writing for me is very good it is a little overindulgent at times but also in other times it is utterly beautiful what didn't I like well as said it's a box ticker book there's nothing on paper I actively didn't like. However, 
this book never thrilled me. This book never challenged me. I never really felt that connected to the characters or the place. I was connected enough to keep me going, but not enough to really, I don't know, just pull me into the world of the novel. The plot and the story was good, and in moments, very good, but never ticks the excellent box for me. I was working my way through it going, this is all really interesting, and I can really see what this book is trying to say, but at no point was any of it just, I don't know, grabbing me, throwing me around the room. I, I don't know, I don't know what I want from a book, but I wanted something a bit more, a bit more than what this book was offering. It all just felt a little bit safe. The separate threads that are weaving in and out of this novel are all interesting, but not thrilling. The trial, etc., that goes on for a little while and seems to be the backbone of what's hooking Willie into the story that Leslie is telling, is just... It's all... It's good. <laughs> it's good. I'm really conflicted because it's good. All very good. But, yeah, I don't know. Uh, a lot of people have absolutely been bored over by this novel and it is not doing the same thing for me. The themes and ideas in this novel, as mentioned, are very good, but they are just not, for me, pushing far enough. Nothing in this novel goes where I really wanted it to go, and I don't know if that is because the novel is based around real-life people, and the idea that you can only push the confines of the fact so far within the fiction before it becomes ridiculous. However, I feel like if you could push the fiction of this novel further, the drama of it, just take it even further, then maybe the ideas and what the novel is trying to say would have been able to hit me in the face a little bit more. It does just enough to tick every box you would want from a piece of literary fiction, but it never tries to break out of the box or smash that box to pieces. I don't know why I'm talking about these tick boxes so much, but hopefully this all makes sense. Overall, I don't regret reading this book. I thought it was very good. However, I expected more. I am left feeling a little underwhelmed. I wanted a stronger connection to the characters. I wanted a stronger connection to place, even though the place is painted beautifully. I just wanted to feel like I was living in it a little bit more. And I wanted the politics and what it was trying to say to scream out at me a little bit more. Yeah, it's just a little safe and a little underwhelming. And depending on the writing style, you are either going to absolutely fall in love with it for how cosy and lovely and wonderful the writing is, or maybe be a bit put off by how overindulgent the writing is, how flowery it is, etc. So there you go, I'm gonna give this novel 3.5 stars out of five, which in my book means it was very good. However, I can totally understand this novel's place on the long list, and I actually think it deserves to be there. I think if you're the type of reader who falls in love with the flowery nature of the writing, it's going to be right up there for you. I think anyone who gives this five stars, or who thinks it's fantastic, is totally justified in their reason for that, if they love that kind of writing style. So yeah, there you go. But for me, it's just very good. But it's time to play my new favourite game. Burnham Copperhead. Is this book better than Burnham Wood and Demon Copperhead? And the answer is, you've already guessed it, no, of course it's not. <laughs> not even close. Not even close. But I would have really liked to have seen this novel on the long list with Burnham Wood and Demon Copperhead. I think it would sit very nicely next to both of them. But there you go, not to be. Uh, have you read this novel? And if so, what did you think about it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Or were you like me a little bit in the middle with it? I'd love to know. And I'll see you all on the next one.